In this tutorial, we're going to talk about semantic versioning and how you can use it to define changes that occur within your Node.js projects. So in the last lesson, we set up a basic project and defined its dependencies in our package.json file. And you may have noticed that the Node.mon dependency that we installed is defined with a three part number. And you might have already guessed that this is the actual version of Node.mon that we installed, or at least that we defined in our dependencies of our package.json file. And this is an example of semantic versioning, with each of those numbers, the 1, the 19 and the 0, intended to represent a different type of change within the npm package. So semantic versioning isn't something that's unique to Node.js projects, but I think it's important to have a quick look at it now, just so that you understand what it means for the dependencies that you're installing, and also how to use it within your own projects. So there is actually a website, semver.org, which is set up to explain what semantic versioning is. The first number represents when you make a major change to your package, and it may no longer be suitable for use within other people's projects. For example, you've made a breaking change by removing a function which is commonly used, for example. So obviously people are going to want to know about it if you do make a major change. The second number is when you've added some functionality, but people can still happily use that package within their project, but it will just give them a new function or feature which they can make use of. And the final third number is when you patch a bug or maybe when you add a change that doesn't really add any new features, but will address some issue within your package, which is pretty much transparent to the users who have installed it as a dependency. So as you can see, the version of Node.mon that we installed in our package.json is the first major version that's had 19 updates, and the Semver hasn't actually been updated to represent any bug fixes that have been implemented. So what does the caret, the little arrow pointing up, represent at the front of the number? Well, it basically means that when you do an npm install, npm will actually look and see if there are any newer versions of Node.mon and install that newest version instead, and in turn will update the package.json file. So the caret modifier won't actually update the Node.mon package above version 2. So npm will never install a breaking change, for example, but we can change that to a tilde modifier. So this will install any bug fix updates that come from Node.mon, but it will never install a minor version so we'll never go above 19. You can actually put ranges within your semvers as well, so have greater than or less than versions, but that's quite uncommon. But one common thing is to actually remove the modifier completely, so that version 1.19.0 will always get installed, no matter who is running npm install. And that's quite useful because you know the code that you're writing within your project will always have the same dependencies, but you will have to go and update those manually if you want to make use of any new features in your dependencies. So I'm going to set that back to a caret modifier and I will just run an npm install, see if there are any new versions of Node.mon to install. And there doesn't seem to be any new versions at this point. So as discussed, you can make use of semantic versioning within your own projects within the version property of your package.json file. And currently by default we're at 1.0.0. .0 .0. And I'll just give you a quick example of how you might update this in a real world project. So let's initialize our project with a git repository to start off with. And a good thing to do when you are initializing a new Node.js project in Git is to make sure that the node modules folder is actually ignored. So now if I add the rest of the project files to the git repository and commit those to the master branch, we then might go and make some changes to the app.js file. And when we go to commit these changes, we'll update our package.json to represent what type of change has occurred. And I'll just add this in as a minor update. Since we're adding some very basic functionality, but not really addressing a bug, and we're definitely not making a major change to the project. So with those two changes, I would then commit them to the Git repository. So by versioning our packages this way, especially if you were going to publish them on the npm repository, users can download older versions and use those in their projects. And then when you release an update, they can download that newer version as long as they've defined in their dependencies with one of the modifiers to make sure they only download changes that they want to. So there you have a quick overview of semantic versioning with Node.js projects and dependencies. And hopefully that's something that you can start using with your Node.js projects moving forwards.